Mossar Ismail is on a drug run. He is carrying Somaliland's most valuable cargo, chaff. This is the fastest chaff driver in the land. He stops for no one and nothing. Last week, an old woman got in his way. She just about survived. Today, the race is tight. The first truck to reach market will get the highest prices. Somaliland's young government, desperately short of resources, has begun taxing chat. But the stop lasts only minutes. And then it's on the road again, whether everyone's aboard or not. The chat race claims one or two lives every week. Kosar Ismael spent the night in Ethiopia where the chat is grown. He chewed all night and, caught at a police checkpoint, is riding high. Between arriving in Ethiopia, crossing the border, how much chat did you chew? <laughs> what do you feel like when you've eaten a kilo of chat? <laughs> And with that, our time was up. This man earns more in a day than most people make in a month. Kosa arrives in the capital, Hargeisa, in less than an hour. First again. There's already a crowd waiting, hanging on the arrival of the harmless-looking green leaves that are, in reality, a powerful stimulant. Chat is the biggest business there is in Somaliland, and the first truckload of the day is guaranteed to sell out in minutes. The man who has brought the first truck says he feels like a king. Chat drains Somaliland of about $200,000 hard currency a day, a third of the country's annual health budget. Economically, Chat is a catastrophe. Somaliland first became separate in the 19th century when the colonial powers carved up the Somali-speaking lands of the Horn. The southern shores of the Gulf of Aden fell to Britain, which held them until Hargeisa and Mogadishu united to form an independent Somalia in 1960. Five years ago, Somaliland reasserted its independence, devastated by a genocidal civil war. Today, much of Hargeisa still looks like this, pulverized by Mogadishu's tanks and planes. Tens of thousands died in a decade of war. Hundreds of thousands fled towards Ethiopia, where they found some consolation in chewing chat. For the rebels in the bush, chat became like daily bread. Yusuf Gabube, leader of the War Veterans Association, took us to meet some of his former comrades, who explained how Chad helped them in the war. Main advantage was uh, we were, uh, we used to become very alert when uh, we chewed Chad. We used to walk longer distances, and also it was a kind of a stimulant for us to be more active. Daria Abdullahi Yusuf still chews for 16 hours a day. The result is insomnia, a poor appetite, empty pockets. I went with Yusuf to talk to some of the women who have been compelled to become breadwinners, even though it means selling the very thing that has forced them onto the streets in the first place. Does she like selling chat, Yusuf? Is she happy to be selling it? Very, uh, very hard thing to, to do. You sit under the sun all the time, and the returns are very small. And children are left unattended, gathering the crumbs that fall from the chat tables. Do you eat it? No. 
What is this for? No. What is this for? Save it. Save it. For money. Save it. Ah, yes. For money. Is it, is it a lot of money or a little money? For you. Money, money, money or a little money? Little money, little money. Little money. Little money. We followed the money trail to the home of one of Somaliland's biggest chat traders, Mohammed Hassan. Hi, Mohammed. How much money can you make as a chat trader these days in Somaliland? Well, in the good day, in a good day, you will make two to three thousand dollars. What makes it a good day for you? Well, you have to be very lucky. For example, uh, your truck comes in first, or your competitor's uh, truck overturns. So if one of your competitors has an accident, that makes it a good day for you? Yes, it will make a good day for you. First, his uh, truck will be postponed from the market, and probably you will have the market by yourself. Do you think it's a good thing to chat chewing? I don't think it's a good thing to do chat. Why not? Because it's not good for anything. It, uh, it's a waste of money. Uh, it affects the family relations. It affects uh, the your ability to do a fruitful work, or even it's it's not good in in any way. In that case, why are you encouraging it by selling it? Um, uh, if I'm not selling, there will be somebody else who is selling. It. So if it's somebody else, it rather be me. Family relations are now so affected by the chat culture that Hargeisa District Court is filled with women seeking divorce. The international community may be fickle, but chat is a faithful mistress. Shikli Yusuf's husband is an unemployed war veteran. Her marriage has fallen apart, like every other marriage in court today, because of the one-two punch of poverty and chat. And with that, another bond was broken. Yusuf and I drove into the desert to meet other casualties of chat. For chat is also a major health problem. Young men already traumatized by war are being paralyzed and blinded by stroke. These men are experiencing chat psychosis, victims, according to some researchers, of the highest incidence of mental illness in the world. But Somaliland has not a single psychiatrist. What it does have is an open-air asylum run by a traditional healer who bans chat and replaces walls with chains. This young man was in Yusuf's battalion and explained through him exactly what that meant. We were, uh, our uh, battalion was, uh, uh, it was a guerrilla battalion of 120, mm -hmm. and uh, only 30 survived. 30 out of 120? Uh, How many people have you met that you know here, Yusuf? Well, I think the majority of them are known to mm -hmm. me. How do you feel when you see them here like this? Very sad. Mm -hmm. It seems that the number is increasing. Mm -hmm. Increasing, too, because of returnees from Britain, where chat is a huge problem in the expatriate Somali community. This young man chewed almost around the clock in London. His mother brought him back to Somaliland for a cure. Do you think the chains solve your problem? No. Not? But not just chains, whips, too, meant to exercise the devils that they say have possessed him since he chewed. Right. Does it hurt? Does it hurt when I touch it? It's grim, but it's all there is. 
Hargeisa's psychiatric ward was destroyed in the okay, war. But if Somaliland is growing stronger, so too is Chad. It's no longer just trucks that transport the drug. As security increases, planes are ferrying it to far-flung corners of the country, to villages and rangelands where the leaves are entirely new. Bundle after bundle piles up problems masquerading as pleasure, tipping Somaliland's wings every step of the way. <laughs> 